So Ubuntu 20.10 just released, and Ubuntu Kylin is one of the strangest spins of Ubuntu I've ever used. The installer it uses is the same as Ubuntu. It's ubiquity, but since Ubuntu Kylin is designed for the Chinese market, you have to switch everything over to English since Chinese is the default. Not much has really changed with the installer except for maybe the addition of ZFS support and encryption, but that might have been in 20.42. Now, Ubuntu Kylin and just Kylin have a really interesting history. See, Kylin was, or I guess maybe still is, its own OS. It was developed by China to be an independent operating system for China, and the initial versions were based on FreeBSD until they switched it over to be a Windows clone based on Linux. And in 2013, Canonical struck an agreement with the Ministry of IT in China, and thus, Ubuntu Kylin was born. The idea remains the same though, make an operating system designed with the Chinese market in mind. A fresh install of Ubuntu Kylin weighs in at a hefty 9.8 gigabytes and the memory usage is an equally hefty 893 megabytes. And over in NeoFetch we can see that this really is just Ubuntu 20.10, but with the Kylin desktop which is called Ubuntu Kylin User Interface, the window manager is Kwin. So this is basically kind of like a fork of the Mate desktop with some custom components written in Qt, such as the Peony File Manager. Older versions of the Kylin desktop were meant to look a bit like Windows 7, but this is actually uh, pretty unique, I think. The Task Manager has all the usual suspects from the system tray, clock, calendar, quick launch icons, and the good old start menu. It has a Windows 10 style of notification menu and a Chinese localized weather applet. The start menu behaves almost exactly like Deepin's menu. It's like a cross between Budgie's start menu and GNOME activities. Now the Kylin settings app is pretty slick. It's very Windows-esque, but without the cluttered mess that is the Windows settings app. It's a bit like GNOME settings and Mate settings if they were like combined, but I'm pretty sure it's its own thing. There's a couple different appearance styles to choose from, as well as an alternate classic icon set. And there's also a special Ubuntu Kylin's Utilities app called Kylin Assistant. And this thing is just awesome. It's got an Android-like utility that can clean up your hard drive. And then there's a section in here that gives you detailed information about your system in a very user-friendly format. And this little app is on GitHub, so if you wanted to contribute some translations or something, you totally could. And while we're looking at the default apps, I want to point out that Ubuntu Kylin is an open source project and an Ubuntu project, so everyone should be able to help contribute translations or whatever else. Now there's a lot of English going on here, but keep in mind that this Linux distro is designed specifically for the Chinese market, so it's pretty cool that it's usable by non-Chinese speakers at all. And the default app selection is pretty standard for a desktop focused distro. It's worth pointing out that Ubuntu Kylin ships with WPS Office instead of LibreOffice. Now the network side of things was pretty rough. My printer was detected and Kylin really wanted to connect to my phone via Bluetooth, but I wasn't able to interact with the pairing notification for some reason. It's like the notification was seemingly being eaten by the panel and I couldn't click anything to accept the pairing. Now there's a context menu in the file manager that allows folder sharing through Samba and that seemed to work but I couldn't access any of my remote computers because of the connection dialog that pops up. You can't interact with it, it's not selectable. Like I could move it around, but I wasn't able to type into it. Very strange bug. Now for the media stuff, RAR file support is not shipped by default, but it's pretty easy to enable by installing the right package from the repos. And Kylin was able to play back all of the media codecs, but I didn't know how to handle a couple of the audio formats without some coaxing. And the video playback was great for all of my test codecs. App images worked great, and being based on Ubuntu, Snap support is shipped by default, but there are no Snaps installed. That's right, Ubuntu Kylin does not ship with the Snap Store. Instead, there's a store built for Kylin, and it integrates into some Chinese services. And just like anything in the Linux world, you can just, you know, install this and put GNOME software, whatever you want, on there. But for Chinese-speaking users, I guess this is pretty cool. There's even a little section in here that shows Linux versions or editions or maybe alternatives to popular Windows apps. I've seen this before in other app stores, but nothing quite this elegant. There's probably other stuff I'm missing here because I can't read Chinese, like for example there seems to be Android and mobile support, but I don't know how to enable it. It's not the best store that I've seen, but eh, it's pretty cool. 
Now if you've joined the past couple live streams, you'll know that I ditched the old distro delves PC and replaced it with a rather low spec gigabyte bricks. Xenotic here is running quite well and I don't really have any comments or complaints about the GPU performance in the games or on the desktop. Kylan desktop doesn't really have a ton of fancy effects anyways, but everything seemed just fine, there wasn't any lag or anything like that. So Kylan probably isn't something that you guys would install and use, if nothing else due to the language barrier, but I think it's a pretty unique distro and it deserves a bit of press. It's hard not to compare it to Deepin, but remember that Ubuntu and Deepin, while both based on Debian, are very different Linux distros. Deepin is based on Debian proper, whereas Ubuntu Kylan is based on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu itself is based on Debian, but they're very different breeds. Deepin also uses its own desktop, which is based on Qt, like entirely, and focuses more on eye candy, I think. And Ubuntu Kylan's focus is maybe on utility and tries to mimic more of a Windows-like workflow. However, even for native speakers, I'm not sure if Ubuntu Kylan is really ready for prime time. The network situation is pretty bad, and the notifications panel is just weird. I'm not really sure what I could have done differently to interact with those notifications, but I know that Bluetooth isn't the only service that requires you to interact with those, so eh. That being said, Ubuntu Kylan is a curious Linux distro, and I'm glad I looked at it for this episode.